Today, we're gonna compare my small, cheap tool shop to my large, expensive shop. What are the pain points and what are the advantages? Today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. Most people who get into woodworking start small, and as their hobby grows, so does the size of their shop and tools. My first shop was in the laundry room of the house I was running that I moved in with Kelly, took over her basement, and now we are in this large two-car garage that is optimized and dedicated for woodworking. It's full of large stationary tools that you won't find at your local hardware store. What's not so common is working with all these fancy tools and then setting up a small shop with cheap affordable tools. I feel like I have a pretty unique experience going backwards and relearning all the pain points. I wanna start off by defining some terms into three different categories. The first category would be DIY tools, tools you might already have lying around as a homeowner, like a circular saw and a jigsaw basic woodworking tools, which might include a table saw and a planer, and professional tools like a three horsepower table saw and a 16 inch wide planer. These aren't official terms, I'm just using them to help clarify some things in this video. You may disagree, that's totally fine. We're gonna compare cheap tools to expensive tools, but first I wanna talk about space. We're in a tiny one car garage, Every time I wanna use this shop, I have to back the car out, I have to pull out the tools from the corner. Just like many of you who watch these videos, you don't have a dedicated space, it takes a while to set up. So then there's that barrier, there's that friction of wanting to woodwork to being actually able to make that first cut. That's what I have to deal with in this small space. We're gonna start off with the table saw here in my small shop. You're gonna notice a lot of the power tools here in this shop are made by Wen. I'm not affiliated with them, they are not sponsoring. Just, we shot a video a few months ago where we bought all the Wen tools and reviewed them. As far as affordability when it comes to woodworking tools, Wen is extremely affordable. They are on the lower end of the, the, the price range for woodworking tools. So I bought all of them. I reviewed all of them, I've got a video on that. So this is my Wen 10 inch table saw. So the pain points of this contractor saw compared to the big monster saw that I have at my other shop is, well, it's really small. There's no side supports, there's hardly any in-feed support, and then there's no out-feed support at all. Setting up blade angles is kind of difficult. It's just, and it's it, it's real light. The dust collection on it is not amazing. I've got another video coming out very soon where we're actually making a station just for the saw that's going to extend its wings and the outfit support and make it mobile and easier to use. But in the meantime, I have to do this thing where I have to take a mobile bench. And this one's got an adjustable height. Crank it up. So it's the height of my table saw. Butt it up and I can now use that as outfit support. This is also my main bench here in the shop. So if I if there's if I've got pieces that I'm working on that are on this bench, it's a whole Tetris game of trying to figure out what to do with that stuff to move this over into the saw. So like I said, we've got a video on a station that we're going to make that's going to help this saw feel like my bigger saw at the other shop. This saw, not as safe as the other saw in my big fancy shop. That saw has flesh sensing technology. It's almost impossible to cut your fingers off. This one doesn't give a shit about your fingers. It'll cut them right off, no problem. This saw doesn't have nearly the power of the other big fancy saw. I can hear it bog down as I'm pushing wood through it. So I need the feed boards through there nice and slow, and I always need to make sure that I have a super sharp blade. Setting the blade angle on this saw is really difficult to get that precise angle. It can be done, it just takes a lot longer. The fence feels really cheap. It is really hard, especially when you're cutting to fit, to dial in that perfect setting and locking it down. Because of the rack and pinion mechanism on here, a slight turn of the handle moves the fence quite a bit. So it's a little difficult, to dial in precise settings. It can all be done. This saw can pretty much do everything the other saw can. It's just harder. It takes a little bit more patience. It takes a little bit more time. The other saw is just easier to use. This little saw is so much louder 
than the other saw. You're gonna notice as you spend more on tools, tools get safer, they get easier to use, their capability increases, and the enjoyment of using the big fancier tools is just far greater than the little, the budget friendly tools. That's just, that's just the deal. And a lot of the bigger tools, they have better dust collection. Because the bigger tools are just easier to use and easier to calibrate, you really have to use your head more when using the smaller tools. You really have to think about what you're doing. That could be dangerous. You can get very comfortable with the bigger tools, thinking everything is all good, and then all of a sudden, you're missing some fingers. One final thing I wanna mention about the table saw is it's basically a spinning blade made to make straight cuts. At the very lowest end, you can use a circular saw. You can upgrade to a track saw. It's like a circular saw, but runs on a track for perfectly straight cuts. Then you have contractor saws, and then you have the top of the line professional cabinet saws. Even if you have a big professional cabinet saw, I still suggest getting a track saw. It just makes cutting down sheet goods a lot easier. All right, next tool. Enough about the table saw. But the thing is, the table saw, the circular saw, the track saw, that's usually, for most woodworkers, that's the centerpiece of their shop. Straight, precise cuts is the most important thing that you can do as a woodworker, except learning how to not cut off your fingers and breathe in dust. You don't wanna breathe in dust either. Next up is the miter saw. Here's the thing about the miter saw. There's not a huge difference between a more affordable miter saw and then the larger expensive ones. I prefer the sliding ones and the ones where the rails are out front instead of back because the ones where the rails are back, it, you, you can't push the tool up against the wall. And this affordable when one, it performs almost exactly the same as my expensive Festool one. I'm, I will say, the Festool one has the best dust collection out of any miter saw ever of all time. Miter saws are messy. The problem with the miter saw in the small shop is it doesn't have a dedicated space. My miter saw in the big shop does. So I've got extension wings going six feet out on both sides of it. I can cut very long boards precisely and accurately and make repeatable cuts on there because I have stops on both sides of the miter saw. Here, I don't have those stops, so I'm a little bit limited. I also wanna mention, I don't think the miter saw is a required tool in a small shop. If you make a cross-cut sled for your table saw, you can do a lot of the same things and have that repeatability. I will say having a miter saw does make things a lot easier and a lot quicker because you might have your fence set up on the table saw and then you need to go make a cross cut and you don't wanna move that fence out of the way for future cuts that need to have that repeatability. It's just so nice to have a miter saw or when you just have a very large board that's just too big to cut at the table saw, you can quickly chop it down at the miter saw. It's really, it's a nice to have tool. I recently got this Wen miter saw stand and it has these little extension wings on here to help support the boards. And I believe this also comes out this way too to help support the boards. The, but like I mentioned, it doesn't have stops. So repeatability in this small shop, it's just not there. I, 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 would have to, I would have to give this a dedicated space. I have seen people make the wings that come up, but then you gotta figure, you still have to figure out a stop system for them. So, next tool. Up next, the bandsaw. This is the, the Wen 10 inch, I believe, nine or 10 inches, I'm not real sure. But in my bigger shop, I have two bandsaws. That is not a brag, it just makes life easier. I have one bandsaw with a very large blade for resawing, and then a smaller bandsaw for doing curb cuts. In the smaller shop, I don't have room for a bigger bandsaw. And so basically, 
it's very difficult for me to do resawing here in this small shop. A lot of places where you get your hardwood can resaw for you. For instance, KenCraft here in town where I get all of my wood, they can make all the cuts that you need. They can, they can resaw for you, they can plane down, they can cross cut. Your hardwood dealer may charge for those cuts, but if you don't have a planer, you don't have a big bandsaw, you can have them do that for you. You might be able to get by with just a handheld jigsaw. This has a greater cutting capacity and then that table makes it easier because you're taking the wood to the tool instead of the tool to the wood. And my big saw has two ports of dust collection for greater dust collection. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Up next is the planer. Like a lot of small shops, I don't have a dedicated tool stand or a place for my planer. It usually lives on the floor and I just use it on the floor. It's stupid heavy, it's loud, it's extremely messy, but having a planer in the shop increases the capability of what you can do. Let's say you buy three quarter inch wood, and, but you want it to be half inch. I will say, I will say, that this 13 inch planer is not much different than my stationary 16 inch planer. On my big 16 inch planer, I can plane multiple boards at one time. That speeds up the process so much more. So if I've got two seven inch, eight foot long boards, I can run them through at the same time. The dust collection on the big planer is so much better than the dust collection here, but they do the exact same thing. Diminishing returns. You pay a few hundred dollars for a planer like this, you pay a few thousand dollars for a big stationary planer, you only get a little bit more for a lot more money, if that makes any sense. It's, that's how a lot of hobbies go. A lot of the big stationary tools, they are made to outlive you. So that's why you see so many like Powermatic tools and Delta tools that were made decades ago still in use in many shops. The, the bigger tools are just made to last longer. I'm gonna have my assistant put this back on the floor. It's too heavy for me. This guy, this guy's adorable. This guy is adorable. The drill press. There are many levels of drilling holes. You can get a corded drill. You can get a cordless drill and you can get a drill press. The advantage of the drill press is drilling straight. This is the smallest drill press that I could get because I didn't want something that takes up a lot of space, but the smaller ones have less travel and less power. At the other shop, we got a big fancy drill press. that has got a lot of travel and a lot of power. Now, you can get jigs that will turn your regular drill into a drill press that will move up and down perfectly fine, but they're awkward to use because it's, it's so light, things wanna tip over. But in a small shop, that might be all you need. Some people really love the process of getting set up. They're in the moment. They're just, they're, their shop, their garage, their basement is their happy place. So maybe you don't need those big fancy tools because you like setup. You like the just being in your space and doing all of these things. I thrive on efficiency and accuracy. I like to be able to just go to a tool and use it because I focus on design and the finished product and the, the, the purpose of the build. That's, that's just the way I approach woodworking, but I think a lot of people like to approach it as this is my getaway. This is my little mini vacation on the weekends or something I do after work. You have to find the enjoyment in woodworking, what works best for you, what makes you happy. In woodworking, there are so many ways to do everything. There are dozens of ways to make a straight cut. There are dozens of ways to drill holes. There are dozens of ways to make curb cuts. Do what matters to you and what fits in your budget. Probably the most important tool in woodworking is your bench. 
I don't have a good bench here in the budget shop. I just don't have the room to have a big, beefy, heavy bench with a big, fancy vise and the dog holes and all the accessories that you can do to the bench. I actually need something that's mobile so I can push it out of the way. Besides having to move things around and get set up every time I want to use the shop, the bench is one of the biggest differences between the small shop and the fancy shop. There's no vice. This is heavy. This moves around. So, you know, you can't hand plane on this bench. Even if you lock the wheels down, you have to push it up against the wall so you have that, that leverage to use your hand tools. It's a sacrifice of having a small shop. Next up is sanding. I don't have a lot of sanding options here in the small shop. I've just got this little palm sander and then I got this belt sander slash spindle sander, both from when. At the other shop, we have all the sanding tools. I do everything that I can to avoid spending time sanding. So I got a bunch of sanding machines. And while I go through them, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for over 10 years, and it's always been easy. I've been talking about how easy Squarespace is to use. It's now even easier. What? Daniel's shaking his head. He's like, how can that be? That is because of Blueprint. When you want to set up a new site, it's going to ask you a series of questions of who you are, what you do, what you want on your website, and then it's going to build your website in the background. What? What? And if you want, you can have the help of AI start populating some of the pages for you. We live in 2024, but it feels like we live in 2029. We live in the future. Daniel, we live in the future. This Absolutely. is unbelievable. My everyday driver is this Festool Random Orbit Sander. I got a disc sander, a belt sander, a spindle sander, and a drum sander. With Squarespace, you can sell both physical and digital items, which is what I do. You can set up a calendar so people can book your time, which that other shop is part of my Airbnb house that we're gonna start running out to viewers here shortly, and you will be able to book time through my Squarespace site. How freaking cool is that? So, visit squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for, ow! <laughs> Got it. Ugh. Uh, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to comparing the small budget shop to the big fancy shop. Uh, that really did hurt. That wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't your funny bone? That was, they, you're funny, funny bone? I'm not funny funny bone. Sanding is a lot more dangerous than what you might think. That fine dust that you can't see, that's the dust that is harmful when it gets in your lungs. The bigger, fancier sanders, they have better dust collection. One of the advantages of the small shop compared to my big shop is I can open up the garage door, blow out all the dust, and then I'm good to go. Or the other shop, I need air filtration in there. The joiner. It's one of those tools, the bigger, the better. I've got a small one here in this budget shop, and it just doesn't get used very much because it's small. It, therefore, it does not have its own stand. It actually just lives in this storage area right here, and we will we'll get it out when we need it. But it's not a tool that is used very much in this small shop. If you don't have a joiner, there are actually other ways around it. You could use a router. You can do joining operations at the table saw. You just need to make jigs. If I were to ever get rid of any of my tools in the big shop, I think I would get rid of the joiner first. Another huge advantage of this shop is multiple circuits with 110 and 220 volt. At my little shop, I am tripping breakers all the time. I only got one circuit out there, and a lot of times I click on the table saw, I click on, and my, and my grandma, I turn on the table saw, and I'll turn on dust collection, and the lights go out. It's just one of those things that you gotta deal with with small garages and basements. Another huge advantage of this space is storage. I've got storage for days here behind this wall. I've got storage underneath cabinets. I've got storage up above. I've just got so much storage for all my stuff. This allows me to have so many clamps 
clamps are so important in woodworking. In the small shop, I just don't have room for this stuff. So I got to be careful on what I on what I purchase. I just have to limit what I purchase in the small shop because there's just no place to put things. Another thing that you're not going to find in my small garage shop is a CNC, a large, massive laser cutter and another CNC and 3D printers. I got a video right here where we reviewed all the wind tools. Some are better than others. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something, no matter what size your shop is. And that's it.